Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of Super Hamster Plays. And in this case, Super Hamster doesn't play. Super Hamster unboxes uh, Kingdom Death Monster. As ever, do me a favour, hit the thumbs up button on this video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well, which is over here by this thing you shouldn't be able to see yet. But uh, yeah, you can click on the little hamster down here, or you can click the subscribe button down there. Either way, do me a favour, helps me out, help me take over YouTube one subscriber at a time. What are we looking at today? Today we are looking at the Dung Beetle Knight expansion for Kingdom Death Monster. Uh, this is another standalone monster expansion. Adding this delightful creature here and his dung ball. Um, you've got a list of all the special rules, um, examples, list of contents, some nice story that introduces him as a monster, the rules for the fight itself, and some other story events that your survivors will be able to partake if you add him to your campaign. Yes, it looks like you can go farming underground in caves. But there you have it. So there is the rule book. It's just like the others. It's a softback. Um, first, you think it's black and white, but the uh, the pictures and the diagrams and things are color. But it's nice paper, but that's about all you can say. It's 19 pages and then a couple of blanks just to round out the numbers because you need even numbers. But there you have it. So there is the Dung Beetle Knight book. Something I forgot to mention in my recent, um, uh, oh, what was the last one we did? The Gorn, the Gorn expansion. Um, you get these guys, which I left in the box. Uh, you will get a new settlement location based on the resources of that monster. In this case, it's the wet resin crafter. You also gain the dividers, for the big cards, the monster cards, and for the gear cards. I have noticed that these dividers are three or four mil taller than the ones that you get in the base game, which is a bit of a shame, but at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. You know, it's a divider. As long as it's taller than the cards that it's dividing, then that's fine. And speaking of which, here are said cards and not quite as many as you got in the Gorm, but it is a more affordable expansion. Um, you've got all your resources, your hunt events, your hit locations, a couple of new disorders, uh, your new armor. Uh, here's all the new gear. And although the dividers are a smidge larger, as I said, the cards are exactly the same quality, exactly the same size. Um, they all match in the sort of general logos and layout and things. So, yeah. You have the cards and there's something else in the box what is it what is, oh yes yes you get uh you get two 50 mil bases which as ever with kingdom death come in the two halves the top half and the base of the base so you get two of those and you get um two 30 mil bases which again come with the two pieces top and bottom and there you have it. There's the expansion for the Dung Beetle Knight. There is nothing else in the expansion. Nothing. Oh, there, there is. You do get um, this little plastic sprue. That's all there is. Just this uh, Dung Beetle Knight kit mail. And it consists of a pair of legs, a torso, a waist couple of arms, a head, just the one head, shoulder pads, I think they're thigh guards, uh, greaves, hands and things, and I'm guessing that's a neck piece, but I'm not sure. But yeah, so you get one male, which is convenient. So you obviously get a spare. No. You also get the female half of the survivors. So more legs, more torso, more waist, more head and then you get all the dung beetle knight weapons so uh, there's new guitars there's a couple of big swords and that's pretty much it a couple of arms to go with the female 
And then, of course, I lied. You get the knight itself, which is a single sprue that in my box has been a bit twisted, but the pieces are fine. Um, you have his giant dung ball, which, as I understand it, does mount to one of the 50 mil bases, because it is an in and it should be independent uh, from the dung beetle himself. You'll see a lot of pictures online of people that have taken a 50 mil base, put the dung ball on, and then have the the knight standing on top of it but they can move independently so you need to keep them separate which is why they have two bases i am debating magnetizing my knight so he can stand on the put in a magnet on the inside i don't know if it's no it's not recessed for that but i could do it um and then putting a magnet on one of the bases so i can either have him standing on the thing or take him off and mount him on the base to move around all by his lonesome but yeah there are the pieces for the knight including his little insecty legs and his wings because as i understand it from his background i haven't read it yet but as i understand it he's not a person dressed as a beetle he is a beetle who has started to become a person due to weird kingdom death time lapsey type stuff but yeah so there's the beetle his giant ball a sprue of female survivors and dung wall weapon things and the male survivor pieces and that no longer pulling your leg that is what you get with the dung beetle knight so if you keep watching this video we'll put him together but that's what you get in the box okay so here we are <sighs> So here we are with the Dung Beetle Knight um, assembly. The f we're going to need the main sprue, and we're going to need two of the 50 mil bases. And because of the way I assemble stuff, I'm only going to use the tops. The bottom half will be painted black separately and then stuck together when we're ready to go. So one for the knight, one for his ball. Speaking of which, these three pieces are the ball. That's all there is. They're about as straightforward as you get. Those two pieces go together and this bit slots on there and then the ball stands up all by its lonesome when you glue it together. So the ball is ludicrously easy to do and they've textured the underside, which is weird because you're gonna stick that to a base. It is possible that you didn't get two bases in your set um i believe the first edition only came with one set and they got a lot of complaints saying i'm missing my piece um the original intention from what i understand was that this would just be would move around on the board by itself it wouldn't have a base at all um but so many people stuck it to one and then went i haven't got a base for my knight that I believe in this, the reprint, the 1.5 edition, and presumably future ones, they have put in two bases. So just double check that one before you get, but if you've only have the one, you don't really need it. But frankly, I would ask for one because I want my stuff to have a base. Why would everything else in the game have a base except this? But there you go. So we'll clean those parts up in a moment and we'll get to assembling him later but I want to get started on the knight himself so I'm going to cut all the pieces out for him except for the um, the little legs and spidery insectile leg tendril legs limbs limbs is the word I was looking for I'm going to cut out all the bigger pieces um, his horn his sword his shoulder pads his wings his head which i'm guessing is in there so oh, there's his head um whatever that is chest piece of some sort maybe i don't know either way i'm going to cut it out cut all the pieces out except for the little limbs um because i want to be sure that i get the right limbs in the right places and everything else is quite distinct but it will be quite easy to mix up some of these so there you go so i'll do that i'll clean up all the pieces including his ball and then we'll come back and start putting things together okay so here we are with the pieces of the knight um 
put his ball and his base for the ball out of the way. We'll put that base out of the way just for now. And we have all these pieces. Um, arms and hands. There's a hand on the sword, so that one goes together. We have feet. We have the shoulder pads. We have the internal bits. We have the wings. We have the head. We have the cod piece. We have the chest piece. I'm going to take the legs, put them over there. I'm going to take the body, put them over there. I'm going to take the head over there. I'm going to take the chest piece over there, out of the way. And I'm going to put wings out of the way. And oh, the cod piece goes over there. So we're just going to look at these pieces to begin with. And basically we're going to assemble those. And we're going to assemble those while that dries. Then we're going to assemble the ball while those pieces dry and then we're going to assemble the wings into the back piece maybe we'll do those those then the wings then the ball and then we'll come back and put the whole thing together so that's the plan so polystyrene cement because as ever it's a nice hard plastic kit and we will begin by taking the shoulder pads this is from the top and we'll flip them upside down and then we'll take this piece and are you that way? No, it is that way around. Yeah. So yeah. So a bit of fluff in there. So you have the this piece here that has a circular end and the other end. The circular end has a small square hole in it take this piece with all the fur at the back and this little divot at the front the piece will go on the right and yeah what we're going to do is take our cement smear it around the edge as we do doing our thing la 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 I'm not going to put any on there just yet I'm going to shove it in the hole nice and Tight. And then I'm going to go back around with all the cement. Because that's much easier than trying to get it on both hands. Dee 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 dee. So yeah, it's in there and. And some down there. So that is he. The sword has a side with a nice smooth divot in it. And if you flip it over, there is four fingers and then a gap. That gap covers over like so. So this flat piece that sticks out from the arm. Do you see that? So there's your arm, and you have this stick piece. That's the back of the hand. So we're going to take some cement on that side. We're going to take some there, and a dab on that side. And we're going to link the two. And there we have his hand resting on the hilt of his sword. This side, we have the same thing with just a hand. So we're going to stick that to the inside of the arm, lining up the ridge plate on his carapace or his armour, depending on whether you think he's a knight or whether you think he is a beetle. I don't know why he can't be both. good to me. So, down on the outside just to weld him up. Now this arm has a small 
square thing in it. This side is flush. Guess what? Small square peg goes in small square hole. If you flip it over, the piece with the hole is now on the front. And he's going to go in somewhere in there. And he's going to go in somewhere in there. And it looks like the nice little sockets for them, so they're only going to fit in one way, in one orientation, which, if we're lucky, will be the correct orientation. And he'll then line up on the rest of the model once we get that done. So. Yeah, just felt that slot into place. And we'll do the same on this side. So that's him, his arms nicely locked in place. Quick splash just to uh, get it all squared away, sealed up nicely. There's his arms and shoulders ready to go. And these wings will slot in that way, I think. They're going one side. Not sure which way around they go yet. That way. Yeah, I think they might be that way actually. And that one presumably will then go in. Yeah. Does it matter which way around they are? I'm not sure, but yeah, those slots there are for the wings, but we'll put that to a one side for the moment. And we'll come back to body chest piece, head, cod piece, feet. And we're going to start with putting the, um, the torso front and back together. So pretty straightforward. Slots in there. There's the back. There's the front with the big V in it. Guess what? That's where the chest piece goes. Well, but, um, and all the flat surfaces. Now you want to go ahead and um, do a dry fit on all of these pieces, but I did that before I started rolling the camera, so I know that they fit. And I've had a quick look to check that I haven't missed any of the pieces during my cleanup, but. As we've seen in previous videos, I probably have, and I might miss a bit, but we'll clean it up. That's why we have our trusty knife just off camera. My trusty knife is actually starting to get a little dull. I need to uh, swap the blade over, but meh. Sure be it. He'll get the job done for now. legs right cod piece has if you can see it it has a little shelf it's, that's an exaggeration but it's that and if you look on the underside of the armor you have that same shelf but opposite so that cod piece will slip sit in his crotch between his legs And it's not a great fit. Or it probably is a great fit. It's just an awkward one to get in there because there's not a lot of room. But yeah, so he's going to go in there somewhere. I'm not going to take him back out. I'll just get in there with the cement. Flood it so it flows to the back. And then we'll try and manipulate it into into the right place like so that is he oh what's next 
we go with the chest piece? Let's go with the chest piece. Uh, so, as you can see on there, it is roughly V shaped with this neck piece at the top. There is a little face on it, so you can get that around the right way with the mustache at the bottom. And that's just going to sit there and make him very barrel chested, but no big, not a complicated piece. Place to get a good seal. That one, so chest, upper legs, torso, cod piece. Yeah, let's get the legs around the right way. Right, if you look at the legs, they bow ever so slightly inwards but I'm not sure which way around they go. That fits that side and not that side. Okay, so if you look at the top, one is flatter than the other. That one's flat, this one has a definite curve to it. The curve is the right-hand side as you look at it. Do that. Curve. The curve is actually part of the um, like the knee pad coming through, but that's that one, and then we'll check. And yeah, that one then slots into there. So on a piece on there. There's a bit of wiggle room with, with these by the feel of things, but not a huge amount, so you should be able to get them lined up relatively easy. Although his legs are now quite wonky. But will he stand? Is that deliberate? Is the question. And I think it is. I think he's just starting to raise that foot because I don't see how you could bend that around any further that one you could bring forward a little which would flatten things out yeah so it's that one so they are meant to be flat and as I say there's a bit of wiggle room there but he is now roughly stood. I'm not going to stick him to the base yet because I'm not sure exactly where center is. Well, we've got these pieces. Let's check and see that everything lines up from the shoulders and position of hands and things. And yeah, it looks pretty good. There does seem to be some movement on that one. But he's essentially resting his hands on his hips, so... If he's going to be like that, then maybe we can get him central. Looks like we need to have him fairly near the front because his sword goes back quite a way. You can see that. And he's leaning forward, so let's get him stuck. Because that'll keep him a bit more stable. Because they are quite spindly legs, as insect legs often are. And he's leaning forward, so...
Mm, I'm further back. Yeah, so slight overhang on the sword, but nothing massive, and he is a lot more central, so that will work. Let's take those pieces back off. Stick his legs properly. And leave those pieces to dry. So let's do its thing. So we now have head, two wings, shoulders, and a torso that is drying. Balls, dung balls. As I said in the unboxing part of the video, that just goes together on there, and then this piece sticks that way. No, it'll only go in one way. And it'll sit on there. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. I'm, I'm thinking that by the time you've got that piece over, it's looking down on the board. You're not really going to see that there's no mold. You know, there's not a back of the mouth. It's just hollow. Um, so by the time I've sprayed black down into that hole, it's going to be dark. You won't see it anyway. I'll leave it open. But yeah, so... Lots of cement going around. And swap to uh, this piece and do the exact same thing on the other side. I don't know if they're showing up on this camera, but there are four, five little lugs that fit into five little recesses. So that should help with the lining up. Another little detail that means these kits look far more intimidating than they actually are. Stick the pieces together, and thanks to the lugs, they just line up. These ones up and get around the top of this. Get around the top of this, which I guess if this is the top, that's actually the technically the bottom. And it's only going to fit that way. Cement in that crack up there and there, and again on that side. Right. Looks like it's leaning, so if you line that up, you'll see that the base is actually crooked. And if you straighten the base up, then the base is actually off center. So if you put the base in the center, the whole thing. It's then leaning off centre, so you actually need to put it slightly to one side to get the circle to line up over the centre of the base. Bit of that on there, and a bit of that on there. Just one enough to sort of hold it in place while I get it all central. So looking at it from back here, that's about right. And looking at it from about there, that's about right. So yeah, we can just go in, slide these bits in. Just double check. Still fairly central, still fairly central, job done. Now I don't have to touch it, I can go over the crack on this side. And by this side I mean the outside. So. 
and I'm thinking that's going to need filling or sanding or smoothing at some point before it gets painted. And there's him. Okay, the wings. Now, if you look at the profile on these things, in fact, if you put them next to each other, they're the same shape, they're the same length, they have the same notch cut out of them. But if you look really closely at the shape of the wings, particularly these tabs, this one's quite straight. It's like that edge and that edge are almost parallel and they're both straight. If you look at this one, you've got a straight edge and then it curls up. If you're looking at it this way, the curled up side is on your right. It goes on the same side as the sword. And if you look very carefully in the hole, you'll just about make out that on this side, there's a slight curve just in here whereas this side is very much flat. So that one goes in there. And the that one goes in this side. Now, fortunately, this is definitely one I would do with polystyrene cement. I would not do this with super glue because getting the exact position, I think, is going to be a bit of a pig. because we're not really sure how even it's going to be and there's quite a bit of play but I figure we want it swept back rather than straight I mean that's if it were coming that way that would be straight and yeah then we'll do the same on this side this one has far less wiggle room um, actually that's not too bad but let's place it on this guy let's see how they both look yeah, actually yeah they're both about right I'm okay with that. So, let's stick this guy on. Let me have shoulders up here. <clears throat> and the back of the shoulders there. We have the chest piece, which all sticks here. get there we're going to have this curved recess in that sword and the curved recess in those now, his shoulders are far more hunched forward than you would probably think looking side on they're not straight with the arms hanging down the shoulders are leaning forwards and towards you with the arms going back and then coming in. Yeah, that is he. All that is left is to stick his head on, which being a beetle, if you look at it from the front, it looks kind of like a knight's armour. There's two little eyes there, but the, the horn is sweeping back back and up, not down and forward. And yeah, that's just going to slot into there. And again, you've got a little square peg and a little square hole. And guess what? The square peg goes in the square hole. And you have your dung beetle knight and his ball of dung. Everything's 
swept. It's like his, his body and his legs are upright, but his head and his wings are at an angle. I very nearly forgot these little sticky fingery things. Right, broadly speaking, there are three three of these with little tabs. There's one with a tab that seems to extend beyond the finger. And there are two that don't seem to have any tabs. Of the ones with the obvious tabs, one is much larger than the others. And that fits in this hole here. And I'm working on this principle because I've tried and I can't get it to fit anywhere else. So it must be there. So we'll start with that one because that starts to eliminate possibilities. Because try as I might, I cannot find a guide that specifically tells you which of these goes where. So we're going to have to sort of wing it. Right. There are two more holes that are fairly sizable. And I'm guessing one of these... Okay, if you look at one of these, the two that are left, one is this one here has a smooth back. And this one has a sort of knuckle. I'm going to take the knuckle one and put him in that hole. Because one of them definitely goes in there. And I can't find anywhere else to make it fit. Although, does that fit? It does. That kind of fits. But it's not really in there. So does that one fit in there? No. Does this one with the vertical thing, does that fit in there? No. Does it fit in there? Not really. But I kind of want that one to match. Because they're coming out from sort of two sides of the same one. You kind of want them to come out matching. So go back to the one with the knuckle. Try you. Nope. Yeah, well the flush one. Where's the flush one gone? It's that one. Pretty sure that fits in there. What was it there? I'm just going to go for it. Let's make it work. I'm not actually convinced there is. I mean, there probably is a right and a wrong way, but. They seem to be fairly random in a whole. Some are left, some are right. They don't curve in any particular direction. Where's the other one with the straight? The other one with the straight tab. And I'm fairly certain you go in there. And the other one with the knuckle would fit in there. Yeah, I don't think any of these overlap. Seems a bit low now. Let's take him back out. Oh, let's go with that one. It's the one with the straight edge. Put him in there, see how we get on. Now he looks way too high, so I don't think it's that one. No, we'll return to the one we had. Mm, 
this one, I think, goes in there. But I'm pretty sure these are just sort of stick on, press and hold. I don't think there's a socket for them. feels high as well. Yeah, let's go for that. That would be the other socket. Because, yeah, that's going to then be following the slope of the shoulders. If you look at the sort of the... I don't know, from the knuckles on the end or the balls or whatever they're supposed to be. There's a little, it's difficult to tell what's notch and what's fur, but it kind of fits. So we'll do that. And then he's got a line of three of them following the, the shoulder pad. And we'll do the same here. So that must go. Somewhere around there, and that seems to fit, or would it be there? Maybe it's there. Again, you've kind of got a socket there, but not really. I'm just going to assume that the last one meets again where the carapace comes to a corner and there is a bit of a so we'll go with that and that is the dung beetle knight give me a thumbs up for fiddly tenderly insecty fingers and don't forget to subscribe to the channel help me take over youtube one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen twenty 20 subscribers at a time or just one just one subscriber at a time and we'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching bye for now bye bye